Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, as you know, the greatest way to create value in a mining company is to make a discovery exploration success. I'm pleased to say that at our Mount Alexander discovery, we're continuing to have exploration success. We're drilling out there right now, continuing to hit more nickel copper sulfides, extending the known mineralization, and I'll be telling you more about that. We actually have three projects in Western Australia. Uh, they all have a bit of a BHP pedigree. Our first project was the East Laverton project, a large tenement package uh, prospective for gold and nickel. BHP was farming into the nickel rights there to earn a 70% interest, spent about $3 million, discovered nickel copper sulfides, uh, had to walk away when their budget for greenfields exploration outside the Leinster mineral field, their home ground, was cut to zero. So we got 100% of that project back. Uh, there is nickel sulfides there. Uh, we're going a little bit slower there because our focus now is at Mount Alexander, but it's still very highly prospective for, for nickel and for gold. Uh, Hawaii we bought from BHP and Mount Alexander we bought from BHP two years ago. Hawaii is a little bit earlier stage but has nickel and gold targets. Uh, and the one that's getting us all the attention at the moment is Mount Alexander. Where we've had a big high grade discovery. Uh, what this map up here shows is the Agnew Luna belt. Uh, you can see the uh, major nickel and uh, gold mines, world class mines along the uh, Agnew Luna belt. We're just south southwest of that belt. Uh, the important thing is that we're close to roads, close to infrastructure, gas pipelines, electricity, and also close to processing plants. So we don't have to come up with $300 million of uh, capex to develop our project. We can leverage off the existing infrastructure in the region, uh, processing plants close by already putting their hand up wanting to have a chat to us. Uh, so we can come up with a very low capex uh, development option. Uh, key features of our mineralisation, uh, it's shallow. It's 30 metres below surface, we're hitting fresh massive nickel sulphides, high grade stuff, that's uh, ridiculously good. Uh, very lucky to have that, it means it's low cost drilling and it's also going to be low cost mining when we finally get a resource and, and do a mining study. Uh, we have a large mineral system, so far we're focusing on the cathedral's belt, uh, over four kilometres of strike of mineralisation. Uh, that is within a 200 square kilometre tenement package, uh, which we've only scratched the surface. We know there's more nickel copper sulphides there, particularly along the Mount Alexander belt, but the key focus is that four, four and a half kilometre strike of the uh, cathedral's belt, where there's definitely a large mineral system. Uh, our mineralisation is high grade. Uh, it's not just high grade nickel, but we've also got copper, cobalt and platinum palladium, and all of those are in... Uh, high grades which would be good enough for a standalone deposit of each of those commodities. Uh, they're all electric vehicle battery uh, metals so uh, they're going to be in strong demand. The metallurgy is excellent, we don't have any of the nasties like arsenic or high MGO or talc which makes some of the nickel sulphide deposits in WA unminable, uneconomic. Uh, we don't have any of that. Our metallurgy has been excellent, um, there's another slide coming up, but we've had separate 18% uh, nickel concentrate produced and a separate 32% copper concentrate produced with strong cobalt credits as well. These are three of our, our best hits. We started drilling out to Mount Alexander in April 2016, started hitting massive nickel sulphide straight away. Um, the best uh, drill hole we've hit was in November last year, MAD 71. Anyone who's been following us was a terrific hole, 17.45 metres of nickel copper sulphides. Uh, just from 37.45 metres down hole. So that's an incredibly good intersection, the kind of intersection that speaks immediately about the volume of sulphides that can be an economic deposit. That's one of the reasons why when we hit that hole, our share price tripled uh, pretty much within a week. Um, it's come back down a little bit, unfortunately, because we stopped drilling over Christmas and the momentum seems to have gone out of the market. But uh, that's the kind of intersection that really speaks to the economic potential. The other two prospects have also had some pretty good uh, intersections. Cathedral, 7.5 metres, 3.9% nickel. That's certainly uh, pointing towards economic grades and economic potential. And at investigators, some really high grades, 5.3 at 4.95%. Uh, so very good results. We're drilling uh, again now. Uh, we continue to hit more nickel copper sulphides. Assays are pending, so there'll be more announcements coming very soon. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a large mineral system, so the first map on the uh, your left hand side, your left hand side uh, shows the tenement package. The cathedral's belt is that east northeast structure. It's quite unusual. The typical uh, ultramafic belts which contain nickel deposits are the north northwest belts, similar to the um, uh, Mount Alexander belt there. We know there's nickel sulphides there, but we have barren 
uh, sulfides and graphitic shales there, so it makes electromagnetic surveys a little bit tricky. Up in the cathedral's belts, we have no false positive anomalies with EM. Every conductor that comes up ends up being massive nickel sulfide mineralization. Again, that's a phenomenal success rate. If you're following any nickel sulfide exploration, you know you probably get a 99.9% .9 failure rate. Um, so we're very lucky to have this unique uh, site. 4.5 kilometers strike of mineralization. It's not continuous yet. We're really just drilling the um, nickel sulfide EM conductors that we find. Uh, we will be planning a more of a definition drill out as we go along. Uh, this is the MET test we did on the mineralization. Uh, extremely successful, over 99% recoveries. Um, no nasties in there. High grade nickel concentrate, high grade copper concentrate. Uh, and very strong credits for cobalt and for PGEs. It's the kind of stuff that will be very uh, attractive to smelters and they will pay a premium price for this. So the project economics are really panning out very, very nicely. Uh, shallow mineralization, that means it's low cost to drill. The current drill campaign is over 20 holes and we're, it's only going to cost us $800,000. Some companies do 500 meter holes and it takes several hundred thousand dollars just for one hole. So we're getting a lot of bang for our buck with the money we have. Uh, we believe it's going to be low-cost mining eventually, uh, and the massive sulphides are, are very well picked up by the EM, so it's well-defined zones for the, for the drill-out. Uh, we're close to existing infrastructure, so we're going to have a CapEx light uh, development plan. Uh, we've proven that we've got clean concentrate, high-margin stuff. Uh, they'll pay premium for this, and it's a simple flotation process to produce it, so it's going to be low-cost. Uh, the open pit there is Western Area Spotted Quoll. Uh, it's a wonderful site. Uh, we hope to have something similar to that up at uh, Mount Alexander one day. Uh, the rest of the presentation is all about nickel. We think it's the right time to start investing in nickel. Uh, the cycle is definitely underway. That map uh, graph, sorry. Uh, the black line shows the nickel price. Uh, it's gone through its trough and it's now starting the upswing. Uh, the other part of the graph shows the uh, LME and Shanghai uh, inventories. Uh, they're going down. So it's a very simple... Uh, inventories down, price up. Very clear trend. We think it's going to be sustained when the inventory starts to get below 300,000 tonnes. Uh, we'll really start to see some price action, we believe. Uh, Wood McKenzie, expert commodities forecaster, are telling us that they expect $22,000 a tonne. Uh, that says $21,000 a tonne, but they've already actually revised it up to $22,000 a tonne as their long-term forecast. We're currently at just under $14,000 a tonne, so uh, we'll all be dancing on the tables when we get to 22000 why, why is this upswing happening? Well, the electric vehicle revolution is really a big part of it. Uh, stop press down there in the corner. BHP two weeks ago announced that they'll be selling 90% of the nickel sulphide to battery manufacturers. If you said that to someone five years ago, they would have called you crazy. But there it is, BHP's on record. 90% uh, of their production of nickel will go to nickel, uh, battery manufacturers. So it's real, it's happening, and it's only going to accelerate and snowball even faster. We already are servicing uh, interest from battery manufacturers and if you're following Western areas, I'll tell you that half a dozen of the battery manufacturers have gone to see them as well. So we, we were expecting a million tonne deficit by 2025 and that's clearly going to be reflected in a big um, price pressure on the, the nickel price. Uh, McKinsey & Co, management consultants, uh, can see uh, a separation in the nickel market between the pig iron and the nickel sulphides that we have. Nickel sulphide is produced in the nickel sulphate required for batteries much easier, much cheaper. Nickel laterate's a little bit harder, if, if possible at all. So we could see a price premium being paid for our nickel sulphide. Uh, this is uh, just a comparison of some of the commodities, not too dissimilar to the gentleman from Westpac. Uh, the long-term forecast compared to the current price, uh, based on the long-term forecast from Wood Mackenzie. Uh, everything is about or at or near the uh, long-term forecast except for cobalt. They think there's a bit of froth in cobalt. Uh, but what we're focused on is the nickel. They believe there's huge upside in nickel, 50% upside at least. Um, so, you know, it's the right place to be investing. Nickel has got a lot of upside. Where is it going to go to? Well, Wood Mackenzie say long-term forecast is 22,000. We'd be very, very happy with that. We're at 14,000 now. Anything that goes up from here is pure profit. Uh, the previous high in the cycle, 2007, was $54,000 a tonne. Will it go there again? Uh, I think I can't really say, yes, it's going to go there, but don't be surprised if it gets pretty close. Uh, we've uh, got a tight capital register, 278 million shares on issue. 
Uh, we, the founders, are still the largest shareholders, so we try and keep a very tight rein on our capital structure. Uh, we have some listed options as well, maturing in September 2020. Uh, our market cap's just under 40 million now, and we have about $4 million cash in the bank. We get a lot of bang for the buck with that money, so no need to raise capital in the uh, immediate future. Uh, we're attracting some institutional shareholders already. The CQS Group out of London, City Natural Resources High Yield Trust, uh, is our largest institutional shareholder. Um, and we are seeing a lot of institutional interest in the nickel space and wanting to get on board uh, a nickel play like us. Uh, so the basic value proposition for St. George, uh, we've had our discovery, high-grade nickel copper PGEs uh, in Western Australia, favourable jurisdiction, economics are looking very, very favourable as well. We're currently drilling out that resource uh, and at the same time we're seeing an upswing in the nickel price. Both of those factors are going to drive uh, an increase in the valuation of St. George, we believe, creation of shareholder value, increase in the shareholder price. And that's the presentation. Thank you very much.